Hello, Akron fans, and welcome to round two of the 2013 Christmas tournament matches. Now, you may be wondering, why on January 10th are you doing Christmas tournament matches? Well, it turns out that Christmas is, in fact, a very poor time for Christmas tournament matches. Really shouldn't have been much of a surprise there, but at any rate, matches are continuing, so this is round two. We shall be starting off with God vs. Haiku. Followed by Monkuki vs. Electro, and then Cybernetic Pony vs. Shalka, and Kitan vs. Aragant. Whoever wins will go on to round three, and whoever loses will continue in the losers round two against the losers of round one. Sorry, losers round one against losers of round one. And we'll get to that later on. But for today, it is going to be round two matches. Anyway, let us begin. So, first match is on rooftop oh. Sorry, you can ignore the win counter there. Anyway, first match is on rooftop showdown between Haiku and God. Haiku's on the west side of the map with CISO, and God is on the east side of the map, and he's playing Grekim. So, God is... probably the best zero... Sorry, he is the best zero K player. He's probably the best Akron player. Since I also cast 0k, there's quite a bit of crossover there. So anyone who's watching who watches my 0k cast should find God's name familiar. And terrifying. We'll see how this works out. I mean, Haiku isn't a weak player too much himself, but God really is a terrifying player. So Haiku's kind of the underdog in this case. And God, however, is playing Grekim. And Caesar versus Grekim, this is a matchup that has been pretty much the matchup for Akron for a long time. It's... In the last few patches, Vekir has been much more popular, which is nice. But for years, Caesar versus Grekim was the big matchup everyone was talking about all the time in terms of balance discussions and in terms of anything to do with the way the game played out, in terms of resource discussions, in terms of map making discussions. It was always Caesar versus Grekim. Just because they, well, they're very diametrically opposed. Caesar has a much easier time, or at least in the past, had a much easier time expanding rapidly across the entire map with a couple of Marines as the start, and the Marines are builders. While Grekim, on the other hand, had to build a bunch of Octos, and those Octos had to push out resource processors, and they also had to defend, and they were spending a ton of money on that. And so it was harder for Grekim to expand around the map, and Ciso ended up getting a huge economic advantage as a result, and then design decisions were made around that. And ultimately, it went down to resource processors costing 80 liquid crystal, and that pretty much fixed up most of the problems. Anyway, God looks like he's going for a pretty quick rush. Actually, very quick proxy, or possibly proxy. This looks more like a scout, to be honest. Could be a proxy. It is a little bit awkward that he is getting up when he is. Haiku going for a much more typical just scouting attack with his opening forces. Likely not expecting anything happening at this point, but this is definitely going to be an interesting match regardless. It looks like God... Let's see if he's committed to this. I don't think so. He's probably just scouting forward, possibly scaring Haiku into thinking a proxy is coming. Though, usually when the proxy like that is coming, it would have happened a lot sooner. But, uh, as I was saying, it would happen at about, actually, maybe a bit sooner than this. But yeah, this is not a bad time for that sort of thing to happen. And it looks like God might be even going further back to do this. So, about my earlier comment, yeah, it's kind of like that. So God definitely going for that. Figuring that on game one, and yes, this is game one, I'll clean this up after this game. Anyway, on game one, he's basically figuring, well, I could just go for it. Because crazy strategies like that on game one are no risk. Well, they're a bit of risk, because if you lose the first match, then it's harder to win, because you have to win both the next two matches. But you still have another match to win. Or lose, as the case may be. But you still have another match to play, at any rate. Haiku doesn't really seem to be too concerned, though. I don't see anything... He doesn't appear to be going back and changing up any of his construction in his base changing up his defense, building an early armory to deal with this. He's much more focused on getting a proxy of his own, in fact, so both players are going for very similar crazy strategies. However, I believe at this point, God's is actually better than it looks. Right now, we only see the Seppi, but I would think possibly earlier in the past we'd see something else. On the other hand, the blue time of will be much more indicative, and it looks like... No, it looks like God actually did cancel that out. He is no longer going for that proxy strategy, while Haiku is still going for his. So, 
God might be predicting that proxy coming in. We'll see how he scouts out. We'll see what he does. Because right now, Haiku does have a pretty large proxy base coming up here. The maneuvering of his infantry is a little suspicious. That's the Seppi we saw, which we'll be going with the balloon time with. But the maneuvering here may be a little bit suspicious. Not sure if God's going to pick up on that. He probably will, that there's a proxy up in the north. While God, on the other hand, jumping back to the two-minute mark, and he's not building up RPs that quickly. He might be suspicious. He probably doesn't have, he doesn't have the money, obviously, but he did build Octos fairly early before building up for RPs. Oftentimes, you're just building straight RPs. You only build the Octo when you can afford the RP. Not sure if God's trying to be defensive there. And Heiko, on the other hand, is... Well, jumping back, double-checking his proxy. He's, co he's committed to that proxy, that's for sure. Looks like he's coming from a slightly less suspicious angle, though. Probably just to deal with this Octo. And it looks like God, having not turned that Octo into an RP, paid off in that iteration. But he is turning it into an RP, so that will be different. We see where Haiku is focused. That RP was the Octo that defended at about the 345 mark or so. Meaning that Haiku will actually have a much easier time getting into God's base, though God probably not completely unprepared for this. Can easily throw up an Octo from here. I don't see him doing so, but very likely to happen fairly soon. And there we go. There's the Octo. Pod, in fact. That's gonna cut this pretty short. Granted, the factory units are not too bad against Octopods. At least Lancers aren't too bad. ATHCs, you do need to outnumber the Octopods. I think for cost it's about even, but you need to outnumber them at least. ATHCs are the unit of choice. Haiku is queuing up a few of those. Actually, a little bit surprised he isn't just going for another importer and factory combo, but... Apparently he's decided not to do that. Norm the thing is, Akron, like most real-time strategy games, queuing is a bad idea. The only real-time strategy games in which queuing is a good idea are those based on Total Annihilation, like Zero K, and many others. Zero K, Spring Commander, Planetary Annihilation, there's plenty of them. Anyway, the point is, those games use a streaming economy system, which makes... Actually, Command & Conquer also, and Homeworld. Anyway, most RTS games that are much more similar to StarCraft and Warcraft when you build something, you spend resources, which means queuing uses up resources that could have been used elsewhere or could have been used for other production structures, which then could have allowed you to build twice as quickly or multiple times as quickly. So Haiku's proxy... That being said, Haiku's proxy may be just as fast as it could be anyway. Building a second factory here might not be the fastest option. Would bear testing. But in general... And I should point out, in Akron's case, it's actually really only true for CISO and Vecchier infantry. For Grekum, they actually can parallel build, so it doesn't matter, they aren't really queuing. And Vecchier's the same way inside their depots. So really, that advice is mostly applicable to CISO, and very mildly applicable to Vecchier. One of the other major asymmetries between CISO and Grekum. But, like I said, those balance discussions are considerably less... considerably less inflammatory than they were in the past. They're still kind of ongoing, but it's nowhere near as big of a thing as it was a year and a half ago. Anyway, God, however, does have his Octopods. There's prep for it. As you can see, that is just tearing apart Haiku's proxy. And Haiku, I mean, this is a minute up from the, less than a minute up from the unplayable past edge. Haiku has no way of getting out of this other than to rebuild as he is doing inside his main base and try to salvage what he can, possibly get Lancers instead of ATHCs and work from there. I should, I think... Haiku actually did lose that money he spent on the ATHCs in the factory that were killed before they got built. One of the ATHCs did manage to escape, but, and this is God's point of view, further in the past, so this is the truer point of view. However, Haiku, getting machinery, looks like he's probably going to get Tornads and use those to deal with the Octopods. But that would be my guess. Possibly tanks, given the amount of QP income he has, tanks would be more likely feasible. No, looks like he's going for mechs. Probably a very quick macrofab. He only has about 30 seconds before the Octopods get in. And that's assuming that God is actually going for this. And it looks like God is, in fact, going for that attack. But we'll see exactly... He might be delaying a bit. I think he is delaying a bit, which gives Haiku a bit of time. And no, Haiku does not have any time at all. Seven minute mark. The Octopods are coming in. The Macrofab is going up. And there is nothing coming out of this factory here. No tanks, no Tornads. The tornads would really be the best option, but they are not... Well, they could be afforded, actually. The Macrofab is taking the money that could be going to Tornads. But that is pretty big, unfortunately. Haiku might have been planning on going for... No, machinery. He wasn't planning on going for grand units for Twin Mars. So yeah, this complete reversal. God basically has this game at this point. Haiku, if he gets a Tornad, which he doesn't have the money for, 
As really his only hope would have been to have gotten a Tornado about a minute and a half ago, which is actually still feasible. But we're at minus one minute, and that's... Well, it's... Yeah, barely feasible. So he could get a Tornado at this point before the Octopod attack. But he's not going to do so. God is jumping back, and... No, nothing has changed. Haiku's not going back to change this around, and Haiku does have the Chrono Energy to do that, by the way. He could actually go and fix this whole thing up. So God is going to have to deal with these... Okay, he's not going to deal with anything, really. Nothing out of here is going to be posing a threat. God has this game, unless Haiku goes back and builds something near the unplayable pass to counter this, which he doesn't appear to be doing. This game is going to God. And he was building some Mar Tanks, but that's not enough. Against five Octopods, one Mar Tank will not do it. Even a couple Mar Tanks won't do it. I mean, a Twin Mar will. Or at least Twin Mar will help a lot. But a single Mar Tank won't do the trick, and he doesn't have Granius to get Twin Mars with, so... It'll be Game 2 shortly. As soon as Haiku throws in the towel, and at this point it is way too late for Haiku to actually go back and deal with any of this. Should point out that what I mentioned before was like two real-time minutes ago. It's That window has passed. Also... Per my previous discussion regarding queuing, Monkey points out in the chat that if you're queuing back your inventory, you have other problems. Sad, but true. Well, sort of true. If you're queuing them, yes. If you're building them, no. Especially against an Octorush. Zion Beers are surprisingly powerful against Octorushes. But I digress. However, that's all I really have left to do. Mon Cookie just has to say GG and surrender this game, and then we'll go on to game... Two, which will not be Game 3, despite the fact that God's Wind Counter is slightly messed up. I will have that fixed. Unless it doesn't increment at the end of this game, which it does. Okay. Anyway, I will be back shortly with Game 2 of Haiku vs. God. Stay tuned. Welcome back, Akron fans, to match two of God vs. Haiku on Overgrown Citadel. This is round two of the Akron Christmas Tournament. We saw game one was a pretty interesting match on Rooftop Showdown with God turning around to Haiku's fairly powerful proxy and then winning with a massive octopause. So game two on Overgrown Citadel is going to be fairly interesting seeing as Overgrown Citadel is a really small map. As you can see, it's... You can see both bases from the back, or from the south side. It is tiny, and as a result, rushes are to be expected. Now, I would be surprised if this game lasted more than five minutes. I'd expect that God's going to probably go for possibly a proxy, probably just sending Octos straight in. Haiku likely just go for straight factory, probably factory to Lancer, expecting Octo Rush, or possibly factory to ATHC, but I would... I wouldn't even doubt if he just went for straight infantry and just went from there. Haiku loves his infantry. Could just go for proxy armory right in the center of the map, or even just in his base, and go for straight infantry rush the all the way. So, if he does that, the game will not last very long. The game probably won't last very long anyway, but I have seen games in Overgrown Citadel last for quite a long time. There was actually one I remember watching that was, it lasted about 15-20 minutes with Sepipods coming in, like, massive Chronoport, well basically a Chronoport proxy base for Grekum in the northwest corner of the map, and it ended up with Sepi Chronoports that was a like really clutch timing too, but that was about a year or a year and a half ago. So I don't expect that to happen nowadays in the current metagame, especially given that economy is fairly slow to start out. It speeds up a fair bit near the end, well, near the mid to late game, but at the early game the economy is quite slow, so I don't expect there to be enough units on the field for that to happen, unless they're really small units that are being rushed out. And an early factory from Haiku, not an early armory, rather counter to his style. Like I said, he's very infantry focused in general, but then again, this is versus Grekum, and Grekum has a very simple countered inventory called the Octopod. Which is actually not being developed for right now, and God is lifting up his forces. He is getting them on their feet, off their butts, and probably into... Or, actually, given that they're squids, it's probably their mouths. Anyway. He is getting them off their space between their legs, which is, like I said, probably their mouth. And... Probably going to be sending him out proxy, but Haiku at his point in time, he is about a minute up from when God had set up his forces, or sat up his forces, I should say. And do you see the Sepi is going out towards the north, or was going out towards the north, 
it managed to escape. Haiku, however, looks like this rush actually has done a fair amount of damage. This can't be right. No, we'll see when the red time move comes along, gets back to the beginning, and goes forward. We will see how that works out, but for now, I'd say Haiku is apparently doing really well. Seppi, however, is moving forward. It might be one for straight attack on its own. It will not last on its own, but the pro... Okay, here we go. Faro and Seppi further back are getting out. The Faro, however, is getting in front of the infantry. They it will die. This Faro will not be able to finish off the infantry on its own. If it goes north, it'll be fine, but if it goes south, it's dead. So my guess is that God is, in fact, going for a straight-up proxy. Maybe just going for the north, a sneaky north base expansion, but I doubt that. Probably just going for a straight proxy, and then from there, likely to go for a rush, and... Heiko, on the other hand... This is before he built his factory, he is still probably trying to figure out exactly what God is up to. He did see that there was nothing in his base, there's no Seppi in his base. He does see the Faro here, and... God, back at this point in time, he's 40 second mark, about 10, no, no, 5 seconds before that, Faro is going to be killed, and he is not sitting it up. He has changed himself up a bit, he is... Okay, Monkuki is pointing out that they have, the Grekum do have a face on top of them, but... I should point out that squids and octopus in real life, their mouth is between all their legs. In the space between all their legs, that's where they eat from. Little beak. I don't know exactly how close Grekum are to terrestrial squids and octopi, but I would imagine that they are not dissimilar. But yes, they do have faces, that is true, or at least they have masks, if nothing else. However, that being said, squid and octopus eyes are on their top of their giant heads. So their eyes could be here and their mouths could be below them. However, Grekum biology aside, Haiku is managing to fend off God's forces, getting rid of all the infantry without losing his Faro, lost an Octo, mildly expendable. However, he is building up for an Octopod. He does have just about two seconds before he has a QP for an Octopod, and he does have his Faro alive for health, but it is alive. And Haiku, on the other hand, has a mech, has a factory, and is looking likely to try to get a Macrofab within the next minute or so. Well, he jumped back about a minute, so that's actually going to be much later as a result. But I expect to see a macrofab shortly from Haiku. And there's that octopod god getting that up, keeping QP on there, and Haiku thinks he has it, but he doesn't. God actually has taken this out, so Haiku not quite paying that much attention to the impalable past edge or to where God is in terms of that manipulation. He is paying more attention to this mech, like I said, probably trying to build a macrofab and thus trying to focus further on when that macrofab would be built. Make sure it happens. There it is. There's the macrofab. Yeah, as I've said always, macro near the present and micro near the unplayable past edge. Well, that's a bit more elaborate than how I usually phrase it, but basically that's what you want to do because then it means you're using C on large base things, or using less C on large base things and saving it up for when you really need it in emergencies. And Haiku is kind of doing that. However, that being said, he does not seem to be aware that there is an Octopod coming, and he... No, he is not aware at all, and this is going to be before that Macrofab is even able to get up. There it goes! The Octopod has hit the base. Haiku, not aware of this. He has a mech to defend against this, and that's about it from Haiku's point of view. About 20 seconds down from there, right before the Octopod comes in, the Octopod is dealing some damage, and this is not good. God, from his point of view, we see that he did actually move the... Wait, plan to move the Octopod further in. Over getting more Octopods and Octos, God looks to be winning this game. Unfortunately, Haiku did not get a whole lot of defensive forces at this point. Like I said, Overgrown Citadel is a very rush-focused map. He, Haiku, however, has changed up a bit. He is getting a Lancer. That will help. It won't be perfect, but it will at least buy time for the ground forces, because Octopods can hit air, and it can hit air pretty strongly. But, Lancers will distract them. If they're, not, if they're hitting air, they aren't hitting ground. If they're not hitting ground, they're not killing Haiku's importer, primarily. And it looks like Haiku is setting up that Lancer to attack. No, setting up the Lancer going south. Is he going for going for a counter harassment? I think he might be. No, he is not. And unfortunately, that that is very unfortunate. He lost the importer. He can rebuild it with a mech here, but he's clearly trying to build that macrofab. Still has a sight set on it, and he is still building it. At this point, it doesn't really matter though. And like I said, the Lancer is only useful as a distraction in this case, which would have saved the importer, allowing possibly even another Lancer, which would have been an fairly powerful against the Octopod, but at this point, that will not be at all useful, unfortunately. Second Octopod coming in will finish that Lancer off before it 
deals too much damage and the time but is insufficient that macrofab is not constructed halfway there but not there so that's pretty much game once again god has two octopods and three autos coming in that will finish everything else off these this macrofab won't even be complete before it well it might complete before it dies macrofabs actually get a lot of health during construction it will complete before it dies, but it won't be able to do much after that. And two importers being built. Actually, the Marine to the north was still around, so it is able to build a couple importers. But it's going to be a minute before those importers actually produce any reserves. The mech getting killed, not really for anything. Unfortunately, it just had no way around that. No real way of getting up to the north without getting through the Octopod firing range. And that means the Macrofab is down. That means that... And the Octopod actually got changing up his actions, moving further in, and... Dealing much more damage, much more quickly. This importer is nowhere near done. I mean, should say the reserve gathering is nowhere near done. This is basically game. And there we go. Haiku is thrown in the towel. That was game two. Congratulations to God. And I will be back shortly with the next match. So that was... That was certainly very interesting. I suppose, like I said, it wasn't particularly surprising. Given, of course, that God was... Well... It's a small map, and God is a pretty good player, so... Well, God is a really good player. Anyway. So, congratulations to God for winning that, and I will be back shortly. Technical issues aside.